Hello everyone, this is Deepika and uh, welcome to the webinar on uh, stages of product development from concept to launch. So before we go into the detail, uh, a brief introduction about myself. I joined Amazon in 2016 as financial analyst and I joined right after my MBA. Later on, I switched roles within Amazon itself. So I moved to program management and in 2020, I transitioned into a product management role. So if anyone of you wants to understand how to transition from a non-PM role to a product role, feel free to reach out to me. So these are the broad uh, takeaways uh, from this webinar. This webinar should be useful for someone who is, a, who, who is a new PM or who wants to transition into a product role and understand the end-to-end -end journey right from ideation till the time the product goes live. Uh, I have also uh, I've also added a small case study in the end, which will which can uh, which will help us understand the different stages of product development. This webinar should also help the uh, help uh, help you understand how a product manager interacts with different stakeholders during uh, the launch of the product. So these are the uh, five stages of product development. Uh, this is just uh, based on my experience. You can find different version of these stages, different names for these uh, stages on the internet. But this is uh, this is one of the representation for the end-to-end -end journey. So stage one is to identify the problem. Uh, under this, you identify your end customers. You you understand the customer pain points and and you define the problem statement. Then the second stage is to uh, define uh, the how part. How are we going to solve solve the problem at a very high level? And we will use this to get tech funding for the product. Stage three is to uh, define the product requirements in a very detailed way for the tech team. Stage four is the actual tech development where the tech team gets involved. They do the uh, system changes, integration, coding, etc. to build the product based on the requirements. Then the last stage, which is stage five, is to test the whole end-to-end uh, uh, -end workflow of the product. And this also has the QA, uh, UAT, and the final uh, launch checklist. So we'll go into the details of these each of these stages as, as we go further in the webinar. So starting with stage one, in stage one, uh, there are three parts. So we identify the customer first, the end users of the product. These can be internal stakeholders, uh, mobile app users, uh, sellers selling on your platform. So these can be anything, but identify identify your end users of the uh, product or the customers for whom you are, you are trying to solve the problem. The second stage, and this is the this is the phase where you uh, you as a PM should spend maximum maximum of your time in this stage uh, itself is to understand the customer pain points, and there are different ways to do that. Uh, firstly, you should start by looking at uh, looking at matrix and internal data. So, for example, if customers are churning, then understand what are the key dr drivers behind that churn. If the customers are escalating, then what are the major reasons for that? Once you have looked at the data, then to validate your hypothesis uh, or your analysis, you should uh, directly speak to the customer. So you can you can um, you can create a sample set of customers, call them directly, uh, identify four or five questions for the customer, or you can create a questionnaire, send it across to all the customers. But uh, the idea is to understand uh, the end-to-end journey end to end customer experience uh, ask them to share their pain points uh, in within the journey ask them to rank the problems rank the pain points because the customer might have 100 issues but you as a product manager in the in the beginning would want to spend maximum time in solving the top critical ones first so this will help you prioritize your product roadmap uh, as well then the last part in this stage is to define the problem statement so clearly define uh, how what problem we are solving uh, uh, for the customer how are we going to measure success as well uh, so define those output matrix size the problem size uh, size the problem and you should work closely with finance teams uh, in order to do that 
and wet the numbers. So sizing can be in terms of revenue increment, increment. Sizing can be in terms of cost reduction. But do uh, do estimate the impact which uh, which will come out of the product launch. Now, once you have identified the pain point and and uh, have also identified the problem statement, then stage two is to uh, define the solution at a high level. So this is the how part. You will have to brainstorm on possible solutions uh, for the customer pain point. Uh, understand and evaluate which one is the most optimal solution. So, so as a product manager, you should understand that uh, you should not build something for a for the customer which adds more friction. Or which makes things more uh, complicated for the customer. So keep that in mind when you are evaluating the solutions and when you are identifying the most optimal one. The other thing which you should keep in mind is uh, is, is that tech comes with a cost. Uh, so if there are figure out if there are programmatic uh, ways to solve the customer pain point, hacky ways to solve the customer pain point uh, before you start investing in in tech uh, in a tech solution. Then once you are uh, confident about uh, uh, what you are building, what solution you would want uh, uh, for to, to solve the customer pain point, then create a create a very short one or two page high level document just to describe the broad level requirements that you have for the product. This uh, document will help you in in getting leadership alignment. This document you should share with tech team as well. Using this, they will. Do the tech scoping, which basically means that uh, they will calculate the estimated uh, bandwidth uh, or tech tech bandwidth required to uh, to build the product. So this is the cost part. Uh, you have already calculated in stage one. You have already calculated or estimated uh, the uh, the business impact. So that that's the uh, using the impact uh, and cost. You can calculate the ROI of the product. And basis the ROI, rank your product. So if you have ten product to be launched in the year, then rank your product, prioritize your product, basis the ROI, which is impact versus cost. Then stage three is to define the uh, define the detailed pro uh, product requirement. So once you have received the leadership alignment on the product, once you have uh, received tech uh, funding uh, for the product, then the next step is to define detailed requirement. And it has two uh, two uh, broad level phases. So uh, phase one is uh, long term vision to start with a long term vision of the product, and one mechanism to do that is working backward process. Which is widely used in Amazon. So, uh, working backward process is is basically Amazon's way of ensuring that we remain uh, customer obsessed. So, you start with the moment your product has reached customer hands, and you work backward from that moment. So, this uh, the, there is one way to uh, to describe that moment, which is called PR FAQ. So, PR FAQ is a mock uh, press release. Uh, it has a it has a dummy headline. It has a future uh, uh, launch date. It clearly defines what customer experience you are building, uh, what problems you are solving, who are the customers. So, so it will help you define the north star for your product. So you should always start from that stage because it will help you visualize what you want to build for the product, what problems, uh, what you want to build for the customer, what problems you would want to solve. Then once you have uh, the PR FAQ ready, once you have the vision ready, then you can use uh, this vision to break your product into phases. And this can be your product roadmap. So phase one can be in year one, phase two can be in year two, and so on and so forth. Then the next, then the next uh, uh, step is to create the detailed uh, business requirement document. And uh, in in Amazon, we we widely use uh, user stories to define the tech or uh, define the product requirement. So using user stories, so as a product manager, you will step into customer shoes and walk through the journey of uh, of of the customer, the proposed uh, journey, and then you come up with user stories. So user stories is is basically a mechanism to define the 
product requirement from user point of view so i i've, I've mentioned the standard uh, uh, standard uh, format for user story as well so this basically says that as user i want dash so i want this so that i can do this so you have the user clearly defined as the e-commerce the customers i want this so that i can do this so the, this is a standard template for user story you can rank your user story so let's say if this there is a feature which is a good to have feature then you can put that user story as a p1 requirement or a p2 requirement once you have these uh, two documents ready so you have the long term vision you have the business requirement document then you can work on the mock ups as well and mock ups can be part of uh, part of these uh, documents so these are uh, you so you don't have to uh, start with a fancy fancy mock up these mock ups can be very rough these can be hand written drawings and then you can work closely with the ux ui pocs to to help you uh, help you create a better uh, better more sophisticated version of the of the mock up then the last step uh, in 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 this stage is to get partner team sign off and this is very critical because this will help you uh, reduce churn for your tech team so you review you should review your product requirement document both prfaq and the business requ requirement document with your partner teams and relevant stakeholders so identify partner teams ask them to review the detailed requirement if they have any uh, requirement ask them to share it in uh, in, in this stage itself before the tech team starts uh, building the product then stage 4 is the tech development so this is uh, when the tech team gets fully involved so this is the product requirement which you as a product manager has uh, has shared with tech team the tech team will create a high level design document so high level design document is is the end to end uh, end to end flow chart for software development it basically covers uh, what systems what databases what services will be impacted will have to be changed in order to build the uh, product so uh, generally the owner of this is this document is the tech program manager it can be a senior product manager tech as well or it can be solution architect so it depends on company to uh, company in general in amazon generally the tech program manager will uh, builds these uh, this high level design document then the next uh, next step is to create a low level design document so based on this high level design document the the software development manager creates a very detailed out version of the of the end to end workflow the low level de design document will will cover specific details about which component to be updated in the system in order to build the product or in order to do the required changes which the product manager has asked for this is a very detailed uh, version generally uh, referred by sds when they when they do the actual uh, coding uh, and yeah and owner as i said will be either the software development manager or someone from the tech team then the last step is the actual development so basically the two design documents the developers or the software development uh, engineers will do the actual coding uh, they will do the system integrations and the and the changes required to build the product the last stage is stage 5 which is the testing phase this is this is after the tech team has uh, completed all the development work uh, then then you as a product manager will engage with a with a qa a quality assurance uh, poc quality analysis poc there is a dedicated uh, qa team within the tech team uh, who who does this so the qa poc will refer to your product requirement document and basis that requirement document uh, the poc will create test cases so test cases will be very detailed it will uh, it it will be used to test the uh, end to end workflow exception use cases it will also be used uh, to to do load testing just to check how much how many responses the system can handle in 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 per second and in, in, in per minute so you will you as a product manager will have to review those test cases just to ensure that the poc has covered let's cover the entire business requirement uh, uh, which we have shared 
then uh, then you will need to align on the exit criteria for qa sign off you need to get a qa sign off uh, so ex exit criteria can be uh, can be if uh, 99% of the p0 test cases are cleared then qa will provide a sign off so this is negotiable but uh, as a product manager do ensure that you don't rush through this process you ensure that you spend enough time in this uh, so budget budget time for qa uh, before communicating any timeline uh, ensure that uh, ensure that you are taking into account the qa process as well so generally depending on the complexity of the product generally it will take four to uh, four to five four to six weeks once the qa has provided sign off then the product manager will do user acceptance testing so you don't have to replicate the entire process of qa but you will have to list down the critical use cases which you would want to go through yourself and 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 validate the experience you 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 should so you should create live live orders test orders uh, you should walk through the customer uh, customer journey to to test the end to end workflow in do input uh, the uh customer parameters yourself uh, see how the how the inputs impact the downstream system so validate the end to and end to end journey and then the pm uh, if the journey is as, as per the requirements shared earlier then the pm will provide the uat sign off to the tech team the last phase is the launch checklist phase of, of preparing the launch checklist so there is a standard uh, process as, uh, at least in amazon uh, which we call as the go no go meeting in the go no go meeting we walk, we we uh, we invite all the relevant uh, stakeholders partner teams and uh, review the checklist so qa sign off can be one of the things in the checklist uat sign off is one thing tech readiness so the sdm the software development manager will provide the tech readiness sign off legal can be if legal is your partner uh, partner team or uh, stakeholder then the uh, one someone from legal team will be there so the the pos is pos will either give a go on the product launch if the requirements are completed or they will they will either uh, ask the product manager to complete those requirements and set up a new meeting so to demonstrate the five stages which we just discussed uh, i have selected a sample a very basic uh, case study uh, this will help you understand the different uh, different stages how we start from uh, from the problem from the idea and how how can we uh, come up with the final product so we'll start with stage 1 first which is identifying the problem so in this case uh, we identified uh, the that the customers were uh, customers purchasing on e-commerce website and uh, when we looked at the data uh, we realized that majority of these customers uh, were uh, working professionals between the age group of 25 to 35 and they were living in tier 1 and tier 2 cities so we created a customer persona profile of the customer as well and uh, then uh, we uh, we looked at data to understand their customer pain points we looked at uh, the uh, the customer escalation data and we got to know that around 30% of the customers were reaching out to customer care support to request for redelivery of their order and we and when we deep dive further we realized that the reason for redelivery was that uh, customers were not available available at that at their specified location at the time of delivery and hence they requested for redelivery so this was one of the major pain point we identified and uh, then then we spoke to the uh, spoke to few of the customers asked them the asked them uh, the uh, the major reason for this for redelivery and one of the things which came out was uh, that uh, customers customers have uh, provided their office address and uh, we were not taking that that input into account and we were uh, even if it was an office address we were uh, attempting delivery after business hours so this was the pain point which we identified then we defined the problem statement so in this case uh, uh, the the aim was to reduce customer contacts 
uh, and you can you can estimate a number uh, for this uh, as well. Uh, so the aim was to reduce the customer contact and ultimately reduce the uh, cost by so and so million. Then in stage two, what we did, we we brainstorm on possible solutions to to solve the customer pain points. So I've listed down these four possible uh, solutions which we evaluated. There can be more more solutions as well, but I've listed down the uh, top four ones. So one of the one of the solution to solve uh, this particular problem uh, was to uh, introduce a scheduled delivery. So in this case, the customer can select a slot, they can select a date for each of their order, and uh, and the delivery will be done as per as per their slot preference. So the from customer point of view, when we evaluated the solution, this was able to solve their problem, and and in fact, like since this was taking into account their preference. This was uh, helping them to solve the uh, problem at to a larger. But there were two major cons which we identified. So, firstly, since we were asking customer to select a slot for each order, it adds another step uh, in the order placement stage, which which ultimately uh, results in friction for the customer. The other thing is um, scheduled delivery was a required uh, lot of investment from operation side. So you will operations team side. So you need to uh, you need to have more frequent uh, runs for your last uh, last mile order delivery. So those things had to be had to be done before the solution can be implemented. So these were the two cons which we realized, and uh, and we thought that this will take time to build. The second solution which we evaluated was, and and this was a very basic, simple thing uh, to implement. Basically, uh, if we will ask for each address, we will ask the customer to provide the delivery preference. So the customer can choose between all days versus weekends. So let's say if it is, uh, if it is an office address for the which the customer has added, then they can provide. Then they can select only weekdays for delivery. And they can also provide their uh, business hours. Uh, so there were two uh, benefits of this. Firstly, it is at an address level, uh, as compared to solution one, which was at an order level. So it adds less of friction for seller. Of uh, sorry, for customer. The other thing is, from ops point of view, as compared to solution one, this is easy to imp implement. It's not that big an investment. So these are these are the two uh, major benefits uh, uh, for this solution. Then the th third solution which we evaluated is uh, to auto classify the customer address, uh, automatically classify the customer address into residential and commercial. So this is a more sophisticated, upgraded uh, version of solution two only. So you don't have to ask for customer inputs. And uh, you can build a model to uh, identify the addresses uh, yourself in the uh, in the backend. So, from a friction point of view, this is the least friction, but uh, it adds like it will take time to build that kind of a model. Uh, so we thought that we can start with solution two, and then this can be our phase two. The fourth solution which we evaluated was to have just like we just evaluated if we can deliver it even if the customer not present if we can deliver the product but uh, when we discussed this with our internal teams finance losses team we realized that uh, this will increase chances of theft and it will lead to more might lead to more uh, escalation from the customer so they can they can claim that the delivery that it said it said that the item is delivered but they actually didn't receive the item so this was a risky solution. So we discarded solution four, and uh, and we uh, we prioritized solution two, which was a which was an easy easier thing to implement from operations point of view, and uh, didn't add too much friction for the customer uh, as well. Then in stage three, so once we've identified the optimal solution, stage three, we detailed out the tech requirements. So uh, we also created a long-term vision. So in this case, the long-term vision was to build a hassle-free, secure delivery uh, service for customers. 
based on their uh, delivery preferences so this was the long term vision uh, we detailed it out uh, using a, a pr uh, faq uh, we also uh, divided the divided this into different phases so phase 1 was the solution 2 which we discussed basically uh, in phase 1 we we'll built a we built a capability to allow customer to add delivery preferences for each of their new addresses and these uh, delivery preferences were were between residential and commercial so if it, it was a commercial address then the customer can choose uh, weekdays only delivery they can select saturday if they want to they can select sat sunday as well but by default if it is a if the customer has specified the address as commercial then the delivery will be attempted on week weekdays only then phase 2 was the solution 3 which we discussed in the previous slide which is a more sophisticated version the uh, so we will, we built an ml model machine learning model to auto classify customer addresses into residential and commercial and we uh and and we calculated the delivery date basis this classification phase 3 uh, was to introduce a scheduled delivery so, so since this was a heavy investment from operations point of view and even from tech point of view uh, uh we thought that we'll do it not for all all uh, categories we'll select some categories high value items appliances furniture etc and and we'll also collect uh, feedback from customers and and then we we'll implement this so these were the three phases this was the long term vision then then we all then we worked on uh, on the business detailed business requirement document uh, so i've i've mentioned the sample users user stories uh, one user story from customer point of view is that they would want an uh, capability to update their delivery preference to weekdays if they have selected office address and they would want a capability to update the timings as well so just as an example uh, as mentioned 10 am to 5 pm as the as the uh, preferred timing then from in this example from ops point of view uh, ops is also a customer so from ops uh, operations team point of view you would want to uh, store that information you would want to get that uh, customer preferences and so that you can plan your or you can schedule uh, the delivery uh, as per the customer preference then the third uh, step was to prepare the mock up so uh, we created a very rough uh, mock up i have just uh, mentioned uh, that mock up here as well so there were two options for the customer after they have updated the address either they can choose deliver all day 79 pm or they can choose deliver only on weekdays we also provided customer to select saturday if they want to select saturday or and sunday if they want to receive uh, their delivery on weekends as well even if the address for the commercial address or office address then uh, the last uh, thing in this stage was to identify the success matrix get partner team partner team sign off so some of the input matrix was to uh, calculate a defect rate so if the customer has uh, provided delivery preference as weekdays only then how many uh, delivery attempts we are making on weekends on saturday sunday so this defect rate should be minimum output uh, uh, it should be the customer contact or the escalation so number reduction in customer escalations and the an ultimate cost saving uh, from that stage 4 and 5 uh, is uh, basically the tech development testing and launch in in this case so uh, there were three broad level changes which we made so we made also tech team to do the ui changes to do to uh, to add delivery preferences section we asked them to build the back end logic to flow customer uh, to transfer customer delivery preference into the systems uh, database is used by operations team we also asked them to build uh, build the capability to restrict uh, uh, restrict the item or our order going out on road on a saturday sunday if the customer has provided weekdays as a delivery preference uh then in the testing phase we uh, tested the end to end workflow uh, uh, as a product manager i inputted all the customer all the possible uh, inputs 
so in the delivery preferences and and tested the end to end workflow starting from order placement till the time item got delivered then we had the standard go no go meeting with operations team tech team um, other businesses uh, team category teams and asked ask them to provide uh, provide an official sign off so this was this was our um, our, our journey in on launching in, in building this product um hope this helps nothing uh, nothing else from my side uh, do reach out please do reach out if you have any further questions any clarification required thank you